Welcome to the future. <laughs> this is the Olympus Comedia C5060 Wide Zoom. Bit of a mouthful. It is 20 years old now and the hardware is incredible. We've got this tiny little flippy screen, we've got a ridiculous comedic amount of buttons, but as they say it's what's inside that counts. So what do we have? We have a 5.1 megapixel CCD sensor in here. And the CCD sensors, if you don't know, they came before the CMOS sensors and they have a little bit of lore around them in the photography community. They're supposed to be the sensors that give us the most film-like colours. That's a general consensus nowadays anyway. I'll put loads of photo examples on screen so you can make up your own mind. But for me personally, I love experimenting with older cameras, be that film or digital, because I think it really brings home just how far we've come in the photography realm. Listen to this from the original release, for example. 2003, you know, everything's silver. Discman, the X-Files has just gone off the television. The C5060 has one of the fastest startup times of merely three seconds. <laughs> and a very short shutter lag of 0.4 seconds. <laughs> yes, it takes about half a second for it to actually just like take a photo, which is really quite funny. I don't think I'm gonna be photographing anything too action-based anytime soon with this camera, but back in the day, that was actually a selling point, which I think is, you know, let me just see the three second thing. Okay, not just because I'm obsessed with this audio as it turns on. Timer, please. Oh, I love it so much. Right, so fixed ISO 400, and I'm going to treat myself and shoot some raw files. Look how long it takes to save a raw file. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I should go back to JPEG. See, old technology is fun. Quirks, I'm gonna be very lazy and use my zoom. So what is the magic of the CCD censored cameras and why are some of them more popular now than they ever were? I think it boils down to three things, which I'll go through intermittently through this video. Number one, I think it's all about being unplugged and having a tactile experience. This is the definition of a tactile experience with 11 buttons. I bet a lot of you are thinking that you could probably get a similar sort of quality photograph with your phone, for example, but where's the fun in that? I think just like how people prefer vinyl over a Bluetooth speaker, there's been sort of a movement towards picking up older technology. Even with its limitations, you still get tons and tons of charm. This camera won't send me any notifications. It won't oversaturate the colours for the hashtag socials and it's just a really fun back to basics approach to photography. I would urge anyone if you are wanting to buy something new to get some creativity back, consider buying something older and cheaper rather than newer and fancy. It's just the same feeling you get when you pick up something interesting and new to you. If it sparks joy, as they say, then it'll give you the same outcome. You'll be out and about shooting photographs without spending thousands of pounds. So the lens is pretty bougie. It's pretty nice quality from what I've seen so far. It's a 27 to 110 millimeter equivalent. How, why am I on a thousandth of a second? There is nothing like old tech that makes you feel like an absolute noob, let me tell you that much. So those are the focal lengths. 27 to 110. One thing that is a little bit before its time is it does have my modes. So every time you turn this camera off and on again, it resets. So you go back to ISO 80, the flash comes on, ah, flash. So if you save things to my mode, everything's fine. Bees. One thing that's really cute is there's two LED lights in the viewfinder. So even if you have your eye to the viewfinder, you'll know if you're exposed correctly or not. So what else makes these sort of cool? Well, I think it's like film, but not really. I don't mean that it takes film photos exactly, though I do think some of the elements are quite similar. What I mean is, it takes three seconds to turn on. It's got a fixed ISO. It takes half a second to even think about taking a photo. So just like when you're shooting with a film camera, you have to be quite methodical with your approach and take your composition seriously. Now where it differs is this cost me £25 and because it shoots digital that's all it's ever going to cost me. And as much as I've enjoyed my experimentation with film recently, and I'm going to continue it, 
It is blooming expensive. It gets expensive fast. Look at me spending money so you don't have to. Here is a direct comparison between my CCD sensor and my Canon F1 with Kodak Gold. Now, I think there are a couple of similarities between the hashtag film look and actual film, but the film look itself is such a weird sentence because it depends on the camera, it depends on what sort of film you're shooting, it depends how you expose it. So I don't believe that CCD cameras have too much of a film look. I do think they have a distinct look about them and whether you like that or not is down to personal preference. So fun fact with this camera, it originally shipped with a 32 meg XD card, which could hold four, count them, four raw files. Yes, it shoots raw, it shoots raw, it shoots TIFF and also JPEG. And the idea that someone would ship this with something that could only hold four files has tickled me endlessly. It does take an XD card, which is one of these heckin' chonky boys. And I had to search far and wide to find something old enough and bad enough <laughs> for this to use. Two gig is the maximum if it's any newer. He doesn't like it. My third reason for enjoying the CCD craze a little bit is vibes. Now this is a very wishy-washy unscientific sort of point, but I think if you grew up in the film era and your childhood photographs are all taken on film cameras, then that is nostalgic to you. I think if you grew up in the Digicam era, it's a very individual thing for different people and depending on which generation you are, you'll either sort of vibe with it or not. <laughs> Another thing that I think is quite interesting is the CCD sensor in this is only part of the puzzle. It's a 20 odd year old camera, the lens is old, there is different sort of colour science within each of the brands, so each different Digicam could give you a completely different look when all of these sort of elements are combined. And that's why I think people sort of collect a few, they're inexpensive and they can give you different looks because they'll all age slightly differently. So in true Olympus fashion, they've hit the ground running with this model of camera. The menus and the, the usability is what I would call complete but complex. We have no less than 11 buttons on this, 11. We also have two dials, one lever, a top screen and a flippy screen and a four-way keypad. So you know when photographers lament that they want tactile cameras, I think. <laughs> This one wins the award. So aside from the film it looks from the JPEGs, it's also quite like a film camera in the sense that we don't have auto ISO. We only have 80, 100, 200 and 400. So the maximum ISO we can have in this camera is 400. So if you live in quite moody conditions like myself, the flash is always an option or just moderating your shutter speed quite a bit. Action shot. So let me go and take it out some more and get to grips with it and I shall tell you my thoughts and feelings at the end. So the sunset was a little bit of a letdown but I actually managed to do a little bit of action photography with the skateboarders on the seafront and it was so hard to actually time. But I actually got at least one shot, I think, that was timed correctly and in focus mid-air. So that answers that question, yes. In a pinch, you can shoot action photography with this old Digicam. I'm around the waterfront around Sunset in Liverpool and I've seen several film photographers and more than a few Digicam users with just like little compact cameras. So. It's mad how just commonplace it is now to see these older pieces of tech just being used. I've thoroughly enjoyed the photo walks that I've had with this. I've took it around London and just day-to-day -day life and also around Liverpool today. It's been pretty good. It's mad to me. Like, yes, some things are a little bit less user-friendly, but it's still a camera. If you know how to use a camera, you're fine. And it's, you know, it's good fun. And it's completely, literally completely silent once you turn it on completely silent just electronic shutter so in that respect it's a blooming great street photography camera i'm excited to see what these jpegs look like of course the raw took an age to load so i've only shot a few raw mostly jpeg i think 
a lot of the joy with the digicams is the quality of the JPEG and the colour science and the sensor doing its job and hopefully looking interesting. What are my thoughts and feelings about this camera? It's annoying and confusing and certainly has a lot of limitations. But I've also thoroughly enjoyed it as well. I think, as I was saying before, if you are looking to sort of get a little bit of excitement again in your camera kit, try something cheap before you try something expensive because it might get exactly the same job done. It might get you out and about and thinking about lighting and composition and all that good stuff that really matters and it won't cost the earth. So let me know what you think about older cameras. Do you think they're charming like I do? I think they're absolutely fascinating to see how far we've come. Or do you think they're just, you know, they belong in the past and there's a reason that we've moved on. Each is completely valid. If you're enjoying my nostalgia kick, check out my film video where I shot nothing but film for a month and I learnt more in that month as a photographer than I have in a very long time.